Hello, I'm Zachary Weinberg, and I'll be reporting on the current way keyword filtering is used by the Great Firewall of China for censorship. This was work primarily done by the mysterious Mr. Rambert, with myself, Diogo Baradas of the University of Lisbon, and Nicholas Christen at Carnegie Mellon. First, a quick reminder of what we mean by the Great Firewall of China. This is an umbrella term assigned by Western media for all the ways the Chinese government controls access to information online. It's existed since the 1990s, and it's constantly being updated and modified. Some policy decisions are delegated, but the state has the final say, and they're consistent about what they care about. Control the news narrative, prevent organizations of protests and movements. Keyword filtering is only one of the methods they use. So what's keyword filtering? Keyword filtering is when an intermediate router scans the TCP payload of each packet for strings on a block list and reacts to them by disrupting the TCP stream with forged resets or similar. In the example on the right, it lets Bob connect to Alex's search engine, but when it sees the keyword ultrasurf in the HTTP request, it forges a reset. Ultrasurf is the name of a censorship circumvention tool. And the effect to Bob is as if Alice's server is down. Running at line rate in the backbone, the best evidence that we have is that China deploys these routers at internet exchange points right on the border. They're limited in what they can do. They might not be able to reconstruct the TCP stream or decode the application protocol. They usually can't react fast enough to discard packets, only inject new ones. Um, that race with the responses from the legitimate server. And in theory, they could decrypt TLS, but that would be very expensive and there would be evidence on the, on the client in the form of changed uh, server certificates. I want to emphasize that keyword filtering is only one component of the firewall. They also use DNS poisoning and IP address block lists. Those are two different ways of blocking access to an entire site. And when they can, they put the censorship into the application where it can be fine-brained and subtle. We were working from the hypothesis that keyword-based censorship is used as a complement to site blockades. It's going after writings they don't like, but on sites that they don't already know they don't like. And here's how we went about testing the firewall. We sent HTTP requests from a custom client running on a virtual machine in commercial server hosting to a custom server, also in commercial server hosting, on a dedicated domain name that we control. These requests may or may not contain keywords that we suspect of being censored, and we vary where it is in the request, and the character encoding, and the ASCII armor format, and the server and client locations. The firewall isn't perfect. It lets censored keywords through as much as 25% of the time, and sometimes it blocks completely innocuous traffic too. So we have to repeat all our requests over and over until we get a consistent result. Here's a couple of example requests and responses in the format we used. Um, I've highlighted innocuous keywords in green. That Chinese phrase is what what, which is a placeholder noun. And in orange, I've highlighted June 4th incident, which is a coded reference to the Tiananmen Square protest in 1989. Um, I've also coded those ID numbers. Uh, each keyword has an ID number, and our custom server accepts what looks like a search query, but it ignores the search keyword and it sends back the keyword that we ask for with the numeric ID parameter. And this means we can send a request containing a sensitive keyword and get back a completely innocuous response or vice versa. And what this accomplishes is it lets us test whether the firewall reacts to requests or responses or both. We pulled the keywords that we tested from three different lists. Uh, first, in 2014, Xia Chu published a list of block terms that appear in article titles on the Chinese language Wikipedia, and we retested all of those. Uh, we also used Chu's methods to compile a list of sensitive terms from the 2020 edition of Chinese Wikipedia, and we expanded from uh, English and Standard Chinese titles to include Minnan and Yue variants of Chinese as well. I should say that I don't speak any variety of Chinese, but we have people in our research group who do speak these varieties. So that's why we used them. 
And finally, the Citizen Lab publishes a much larger list of blocked words that they've extracted from chat clients that are popular in China. That's the application layer censorship I was telling you about earlier. We manually pruned it from 60 to 16,000 words just so we can complete the testing in a reasonable amount of time. All of these lists have words written in Latin script, simplified Chinese script, traditional Chinese script. Um, the chat client block lists also have a couple others. Um, and we tested traditional Chinese separately from all the others because traditional Chinese is used in Taiwan and Hong Kong and the diaspora, whereas simplified Chinese is used on the mainland. Here's the physical locations of all our test clients and servers. We were trying to cover as many different routes in and out of China as possible. We don't know if we achieved that because most of the intermediate routers within China don't respond to trace route packets. If you know how to get around that, please talk to me. And we put three hosts in Hong Kong to do a really thorough test of whether Hong Kong is inside or outside the firewall. And the hosts in China and Hong Kong we used as both clients and servers. So we could test traffic in both directions through the firewall. All the other hosts were either a client or a server, but not both. So here's what we found. Number one, keyword censorship is context dependent. The plot on the right shows all the combinations of location within an HTTP request and ASCII armor type that we tested. And I highlighted in red the four locations and ASCII armor combinations where a keyword will be detected. What this means is the Great Firewall is decoding HTTP enough to be able to ignore everything but the request line and the host header. And it knows how to de decode HTTP percent coding but not MIME quoted printable base64 or IDNA. That makes it not fully compliant with the HTTP spec and there are some loopholes. Character encoding doesn't seem to matter. A keyword that's censored in UTF-8 will also be censored in GB2312 and Big5. And we only ever saw the GFW react to the request, never to the response. We didn't see any censorship at all on less used protocols like Telenet and IRC, but we didn't test that very thoroughly. So it could still happen, we just didn't catch it. As far as we can tell, HTTPS is never decrypted. That doesn't mean it never happens. It just means it's not done indiscriminately. Um, and the GFW does react to blocked host names that appear in the clear text server name indication uh, field. That's the TLS equivalent of the HTTP host header. And here's something that we didn't expect at all. The block list grows by two orders of magnitude when the English word search also appears in the URL. Here are some examples of phrases that are censored unconditionally, whether or not search appears in the URL. It's usually easy to figure out why this is happening. We've got the names of circumvention tools, we've got foreign news media, We've got the Online Declaration of Human Rights, which is an essay published by Lin Kang Zhao in 2009, advocating freedom of expression online. We've got Hitler's autobiography. We've got scandalous people. It's usually just a matter of one Google search to figure out why one of these is censored. The phrases that are only censored with search in the URL also usually have obvious motives. Tibetan independence, coded references to the suppression of the Tiananmen Square protest, more foreign news media, more scandalous people. Um, I think it's interesting how determined both sides are with regard to Tiananmen Square. People tried saying 8964 in Russian and the censors caught it. On the other hand, sometimes we can't tell what's going on, like with continued downturn. Um, and we also don't know what pushes a term from the long search only list onto the short unconditional list. The only obvious rule is that the names of circumvention tools consistently get censored unconditionally. I'd like to highlight the loopholes we found in this context dependence. These could be exploited perhaps, like how the Geneva Project exploits loopholes in the GFW's understanding of TCP. It must be intentional that there's more censorship when search is present, but it still presents an opportunity for search engines. Take search out of your, URL schema, strike a blow for free expression, or you could just switch to HTTPS. Um, only the request line and the host header are inspected. Search queries with the keywords in the body of a post are ignored. IDNA 
internationalized domain names are not decoded. That's clearly a bug. Browser sent IDNA in the host field. Um, and the GFW doesn't consistently censor everything that it intends to censor. Up to 25% of the time it fails open, depending on load. It's probably an interesting game th theory analysis there, just how unreliable the web can be before people give up on it. Another finding is that the block list varies based on source, destination, and direction. Um, the, in the table on the right shows censorship observed going from the client at the top of the column to the server at the left of the row. Unconditional plus search only. Dash means no censorship observed. No two cells are the same. There's a bunch of patterns in there, but what I really want to emphasize is that the list is different for traffic going from inside to outside China than for traffic going from outside to inside. I've highlighted um, uh, the Shanghai server and one of the Hong Kong clients in both roles. It's a very different list. What this means is that if you're only looking at traffic going in one direction, you might be missing something. Another interesting thing is that unlike some other reports, we see no censorship whatsoever of traffic within China. We don't know why. It could be because we're using commercial data centers instead of uh, residential ISPs. And another thing is that as of now, Hong Kong is outside the firewall, um, despite the moves towards more central control over Hong Kong. Our last finding is that the block list is constantly changing. We took repeated measurements over a month, and as the chart on the right shows, we see hundreds of keywords being added and hundreds more removed every week. And this is an underestimate because we used the same test list all month. We don't have any way to discover new additions related to new events. But what we can tell is that they go after current political controversies, not last year's news. If something stays on the list for a long time, it's a perennial subject like Tibetan independence or Tiananmen Square or the Falun Gong. And even then, the exact keywords that get blocked will change over time. To sum up, keyword censorship is context, route, and time dependent. There is a strong focus on popular protocols. Not all locations within a packet are treated equal. It is not a centralized system. There is no consistency between the um, censorship being imposed on one route versus another route, and it goes after current scandals, not yesterday's news. The aggressive censorship of queries with search in the URL can be seen as a complement to site-based block lists. Site-based block lists target sites that the censor knows about and dislikes. Search keyword censorship, on the other hand, makes it hard for people to find sites that carry the same material but that the sensor doesn't know about. So they play complementary roles. Um, our data is all available online that courtesy of the, uh, the Internet Archive, and I look forward to hearing what people might do with it. Thanks for listening.